Well, guys, today I have with me here Maya from Fruition Productions. These are the guys that are putting out XRP Unleashed. And this is an amazing project, a, pro a labor of love, no doubt. And I'll tell you, this community, as far as what I'm concerned, Judy and I, owes these guys a debt of thanks because they have really funded this entirely, most all of it themselves, and really have pushed forward to get some amazing interviews, put this content together, edit it, and now they're right at the threshold of releasing it. And I know a lot of excitement is around this. And guys, we're going to let Maya just share what's coming and things like that. So Maya, welcome to Digital Outlook. Give us a little background about you and Chris as the producers of this documentary. Um, yeah, so thank you for having me first off and um, how we got into crypto um, we got in about 2017. Um, of course, we started with Bitcoin. We, you know, made some trades there, made our mistakes, right? Everyone goes through that process. Mm -hmm. um, and we um, even at at some point, we were able to even mine Ethereum, create our own miners um, then got into the meme coin season. I know that 2020, 21 was definitely the wild Damn. west. And it was a very <laughs> interesting time yeah. in the crypto space. Uh, the meme coin season was unlike any other. Um, and then really, you know, starting November 20, like the November, I would say 2021, we got into XRP. Um, I had seen it on Voyager. I was kind of, you know, scoping for my next project uh, or next investment for us to put in um, money into and okay. uh, came across XRP on Voyager. Um, I don't think Voyager is a platform anymore. Uh, they nope. were acquired. Um, <laughs> that's right. But, you know, that's where we did a lot of the trading back in 2021, 2020, 19. And when I came across XRP, it just hit me like a wave it just something told me this was going to be revolutionary, the technology. Um, and so I told Chris and we got in. Uh, we decided to put all of our money into XRP at that point. Um, mm -hmm. Interesting, you know, definitely the following year, 22 was rough. Um, yeah, but for everybody, right? <laughs> for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's been it's been a wild ride. You know, you live and learn. Mm -hmm. Um Mm -hmm. So anyone coming into the space, you know, it's really trial by error. Um, you know, I guess my advice is take what you can from people, but really listen to your own instincts. You right. yourself are the only one that's going to have to live with your investments and that's um, right. That's that. right. So now for you and Chris, um, now were you guys in the um, documentary production space before you started this project? And did you do, or is this like your first kind of like, you know, dive into it or how did that work out? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, yes, we, we were in the, um, filming space, mm -hmm. um, back actually when we moved here in, um, in California in November of 21, um, we met a few producers and directors in Hollywood and, um, you know, Chris got a lot of good mentor, you know, experience, um, from them. And we, we, you know, Chris has already created, several short films uh you know worked on a feature film with one of these producers and directors um so yeah the fruition films has had already been a company for about three four years before this okay um yeah no, that's, so i think that's good to know because you know you yeah. guys are coming at this with a seasoned approach it's not just a wing it kind of thing and right. I, I think also being you know very you know, from what I've gathered thus far, you're just trying to tell a story. You're trying to tell the story of what happened, not with any particular bias, but interviewing right, right. all the people who kind of participated in the creation of this story. And so, you know, my, my question, I guess, would be in terms of that, what was really the motivating factor that, you know, you sat down and said, you know what, this is a story I think we want to tell. How did that come about? Um, last, so last October, I would say October of 23, yeah. uh, is when we just started thinking about, you know, what kind of films were out there on Netflix? Uh, you know, you saw Dogecoin, you know, films mm -hmm. about meme right. coins, yep. films about Bitcoin. Yep. And I don't know, it just kind of came to our minds where, you know, we thought, 
hey, we're invested in this XRP and this right. amazing technology. Why have we not seen any mm -hmm. documentaries or any films regarding even this huge case, Ripple versus the SEC, or just even mm -hmm. about the technology of XRP? And so we started talking about it in October of 23 and, mm -hmm. you know, decided, hey, let's go for this. Let's let's create a documentary. Let's talk about mm -hmm. the story of you know, not only uh, Ripple, but XRP and how far it's come, what the technology is and right. how it's going to transform the future of finance. Um, this is a story that I couldn't believe was untold. Mm -hmm. um, so so that's when we decided, hey, let's go for it. Um, I know that when I first initially talked to Chris about this, I said, you know what, the most important thing before we start and to make sure throughout the project is to always be authentic, to make sure the messaging, right. yeah, you know, comes across as authentic, not as like a conspiracy theory or scammy. Sure. Um, well, yeah, I think a that, story, that's, right? that is an important mm -hmm. element because I think a lot of people are, you know, obviously this is a very polarizing issue in the XRP community. I mean, we have the whole ETH gate thing and maybe I'll ask a little bit about that if that's addressed, <laughs> yeah. but you know, you have that, mm -hmm. of course, you know, there's the, you know, there is somewhat of a following in this space, you know, yeah, the XRP army uh -uh. and all that exactly. goes with it. And right. I think people do, they want an unbiased mm -hmm. point of view, the lens of scrutiny. And at the same time, just really, let's just tell the story as it unfolded, let the chips fall kind of where they may. Now, right. in that yeah. regard, I, I now I guess I need that. So you guys talk about the historicity of XRP and of course, Ripple. I'm, I'm sure mm -hmm. there's some stuff in there about <clears throat> the SEC case. Do you touch on the whole right. thing and how that in, affected this space and how much yeah. of it is in there about that and that type of thing? Yes, yes. I've, um, I think it's a very um, vital point to the story. ETHgate very much is part of the story when it comes to Ripple and XRP. You know, what What was this lawsuit about? Mm -hmm. What's the backstory of why they were sued? Mm -hmm. In uh, What was going on um, even within our own government? Um, so yes, a lot comes out in that story, in that part of the story. We do touch um based on ETHgate and you know the mm. Ethereum founders, uh just a little bit, even like uh just not only ETHgate, but we go back to like just talking about Federal Reserve about this, you know, this whole idea of right. you know, this the system this was that was created and then what came out mm -hmm. of this system and how how this system in essence, was used kind of for corruption. And that's where Ethereum mm -hmm. comes in, you know, into play and in ETHgate. And um, yeah, I mean, David, we have really major bombshells in regards to ETHgate. Yeah, I think um, it's going to be an exciting yeah, revelation. This is one of the things that, you know, I'm anticipating it. I know a whole lot of people in this space absolutely are so excited. I remember when we were down there at XRP <laughs> Vegas and you guys unveiled your trailers and that was even the trailers alone were really just amazing. And, and the level of, oh, thank you. Uh, you know, the film, I don't know what you would call it, a filmography, whatever you would call it when you, but the oh, cinematography you know, or something cinematography, like that. Wow. It, it is the quality really, of the look. quality is, is so phenomenal. This is not a off the cuff backwoods kind of, you know, production. This is a very, you know, professionally done, well done production. You're asking serious questions. And by the way, I think I've heard that you guys have interviewed some really uh, phenomenal people in this space, like John Deaton, Fred Rispoli, those two yep. lawyers there, of course, John Deaton taking up the cause for a lot of XRP holders in the whole Ripple lawsuit. And I think, you know, if he had not have done that, I'm not certain that we would see maybe the adjudication that we actually got at the end of the day. But a I lot agree. of these other people, what was your most, uh, you know, I guess revealing or, uh, you know, what would be your favorite interview that you did, you know, in terms of those kind of people and people in the know? Because you guys also got to interview David Swartz as, as well, I believe, and he's in it, isn't he? Yes, he. Okay. Yes, yeah. yes. That w I would say David Schwartz was definitely our you know biggest interview and most revealing. Right in XRP Las yep. Vegas, we revealed the day before that we we ended up 
getting Ripple, we were able to, you know, lock in David Schwartz for an interview, even if it was, you know, for only 30, 40 minutes. That's you phenomenal, know, he, though, really. He really added a lot to the project. And he yeah. was, you know, he's he's a very important piece to the project mm -hmm. yep. um, because, you know, he created it. He understands the technology. Mm -hmm. He was able to really help in the interview, put everything together of how it's going to work, how it's going to transform the financial system. Right. Um, I was, you know, I would say another great get was John Dean and, uh, you know, Stephen Narioff. Mm -hmm. um, even this week, we're able to, which get another guest, which is going to be um, also another great contribution to the project um, in regards to from a, a journalist perspective yeah. and, you know, he he himself is one that works on stories in regards to, you know, what what has our government done? That's not always, you know, the most uh, stand up or upright uh, yeah, no thing, right? Yeah, so it, it really is amazing kind of when you see because we know that from a uh, more fundamental you know, perspective that right. distributed ledger technology on a global level is changing the way in which finances are going to work. We, we, it is absolutely out there. Federal Reserve, Jerome right. Powell had come out, talked about, you know, the development of a central bank digital currency for the United States. We can see that most nation states around the world are doing that. Of course, right. Christine Lagarde, who was the head of the IMF and the European right. Central right. Bank, she had literally even named Ripple, you know, in some of these um, interviews that, that they have done where they're looking at this kind of technology. And with right. cross-border payments... Um, and Ripple being a strategic, in fact, I think Ripple is the number one, um, you know, developer for central, for laying the infrastructure, working with nation states to lay the infrastructure for central bank digital currencies. And it's actually based off the XRP ledger, the models of it, even though those are right. private ledgers and XRP is not the native asset on them. It's being using the backbone of what we already have and XRP being a bridge asset. And I think that the broader population, of course, in this XRP ecosystem, we mm -hmm. we are all so surrounded by it all the time that we think, oh, everybody must know. But I think, you know, not a whole lot of people do know. And just to be able to tell that part of the story, that in and of itself, I think is going to be a big eye opener. So now in terms of distribution and yeah. getting it out there for the community in a way, what are the ways in which you guys are going to be going out there you know, in the future here and distributing this, like what, how are people going to be able to get access? No, that's a very good question. So the first uh, wave of, you know, we're hoping with the mm -hmm. first wave of individuals who are going to be watching this documentary, we want to put it on um, X. So we're hoping to, you know, set up a, a way to get some subscribers on our X page sure. uh, with setting up a paywall that where you can watch it as well mm -hmm. as uh, possibly even Patreon, or um, mm -hmm. there's also another, what's the other way? Um, we are working on several ways that yeah. we will be able to get it distributed. Um, not mm -hmm. to, I mean, along with working with the distribution right. company Bitstamp. And it, unfortunately, you know, that, that does take a little bit longer to get mm -hmm. it out there because yeah. there are a lot more requirements when it's through right. a, uh, a distrib distribution. And I imagine company. there's a lot of legal yeah. ramifications that, and you know, things that have to be ironed yeah. out and stuff and prior to exactly and what, what exactly. So but even think, on our, yeah. even on our own website in our own page, uh, we yes. are going to fruition productions. Yep. There is a way to actually uh, download, you know, you can put uh, up to three hours of video on there. Mm -hmm. So probably through our website, through X and Patreon, I would say those are the three that we're working yeah. on. Well, I, I think for a lot of the people, you know, that would want to, th this is the thing in this community, realistically, I mean, these cost big bucks to produce this kind of stuff. And it's not as if you can, you know, just go out there. A lot of people think, oh, it must be just easy to go work out some arrangement with Apple or, you know, get on to, uh, you know, Amazon and, you know, put it through Amazon Prime. But it's not as simple as that from what I understand. And they want a big, you know, piece of that pie if you even use their platforms to do it. And so it almost becomes cost prohibitive to, you know, utilize these platforms. So realistically, and this is something I would encourage this community for sure, when we get the opportunity to see, 
you know, uh, these productions on these various platforms. Look, as a community, it's it's. I think it's almost incumbent on us because it's telling our story, and I I really am right. excited about it. You know, and of course promoting it, and that's why we asked to be able to have this interview with you so we could get out before the community before it starts being released but that we would get behind it and go to these platforms and, you know, pay those fees. And, and it's how much, by the way, would it be to actually view on these various platforms to get a pay-per-view kind of a deal? Um, so for the first wave we, we round of people, we are looking at like $14.99. Um, okay. That's nominal, right? nominal, right? And then, yeah. you, right, right. To, mm. um, to buy the film. Yeah. And then later on, yeah. Um, you know, maybe nine ninety nine. Uh, we're we're putting it at nine ninety nine to buy it and six ninety nine to rent. So yeah, that's pretty um, cheap. I mean, you can't even get a happy yeah. meal for that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know. Nowadays it's with like, inflation, yeah. it's the same. You might as well get yeah. entertainment for three hours, right? Well, there um, you go. There and now I. Uh, we were talking earlier um, before we started um, where you're going to be going to various centers around the United States where people yeah. can host, you know, maybe we can even have like where there's going to be a potential for them to see it in a theater where, you know, different exactly. uh, people that are in the community would be present where there could be meet and greets and things like that. How is that? When and how are you doing that? Um, so we will be doing a total of seven premieres in seven yeah. different cities Okay. Actually, within the next week, we'll we will we're planning on making that announcement of the okay. locations, the dates, the times. Okay. Um, but just so you guys know, uh, for this, it's gonna we will be premiering in L.A., Atlanta, Washington D.C., Arizona, um, Boston, New York, and um, Texas. <laughs> and yes in texas ah, yeah, we're in exactly. texas. but i'll and tell you Houston. what you um, we so. are going to make it so fun we want to i think judy and i are going to reach out to our community and just say hey guys let's all show Thanks. up together and that kind of stuff because i think it's going to be absolutely amazing and what people are going to experience and and uh you know a lot of times we get into these circumstances where you know, we, we get lost, you know, the whole saying where you lose the forest for the trees. And yes, I think, yeah. you know, what you guys have put together is really going to help show us the trees where we can literally kind of see things in a more logical, chronological way, an unbiased right. way for sure, that kind of thing. Now, when you guys are having those, is it going to be more or less the same kind of deal where it's going to be like, you know, 15, 20 bucks and that kind of thing for people to attend? And can they buy tickets in advance for these kind of things? Will that be available? Yes, yes. So at the same time that we make the announcement of where the locations are, what theaters, what dates, times, we will also then say... Uh, tickets are, you know, pre-sale, mm -hmm. you know, come get your tickets on for Wish and Productions website. Mm -hmm. um, everything will be through the the website. And um, yeah, it, and it will so be they could sell out. Basically, they could be pre-sold and sold out where, yes, you know, going I'll... to or, or are you going to leave some for the box office that can be sold there, too? Uh, because of the way that it works and working with the theaters, we're, we're not allowed to sell any of the tickets at the box office. You have oh, okay. to do it through our Pre own production, online. Uh, through oh, our okay. own website. Okay, that's important um, because, yeah, if you're yes. just thinking, hey, I'm going to show up and see it, you may not get that opportunity. Um, exactly. So that's, Everything that's will big, be yeah. through the website. Um, okay. And, and, you think, and in the next week, yeah. you're going to be doing that, right? Yes, probably. Week? Okay. Yes. Within the next weeks, uh, probably mm -hmm. within like by next Wednesday or so. Um, mm -hmm. And actually, you bring up a good point, because most of these these theaters uh, I th at the most will probably have anywhere from 100 to 120 mm -hmm. individuals at these theaters. So, you know, it doesn't sound like that much, um, but it will fill up fast. And, uh, you know, so, mm -hmm. you know, just. That's a good point. Um, not mm -hmm. at the box office. It will be all online, all through the Fruition Productions website. Right. It'll mm -hmm. be a, a red carpet event. You'll be able to come mm -hmm. um, and, you know, kind of socialize, mingle with different influencers who are yeah. coming to the premiere. We do mm -hmm. have John D. and coming to the Boston wow. premiere. That's, yeah, we, fantastic. <laughs> which is a big deal. We have, yeah. um, actually, we're working on uh, James O'Keefe and uh, Stephen mm -hmm. Ariel for New York. Okay. Bit Boy even decided to come to Atlanta, wow. um, okay. and and then 
and some Hollywood executives and individuals in LA. So we're working on having some of these influencers mm -hmm. um, and, and just individuals in the community come and support. Um, but yeah, this is it. it we will have a Q and a, so it's more than just a showing of the, the film, right. we'll be able to ask questions of individuals in, in the film mm -hmm. and, and uh, the ticket pricing will vary depending on which city because of course right it's right, more expensive obviously. in new york and la so but we are looking anywhere from 40 to 50 dollars um for the event uh, Have, so. it, would it be possible for people like to uh kind of like um for instance let's say for, if you set something up on your website where people can throw in their email said hey i want to be on a notification list so that you know they don't miss it like when you post it on the website and they're in those areas they don't want to miss the opportunity of buying those tickets so um is right. there a possibility yet to for people to say hey can you email me notify me when these are available so they can get online and grab them and that kind of thing uh not as of yet that is mm -hmm. actually a very good uh, that's a great idea to be able to set that up um mm -hmm. we will con consistently from now until the premieres be right. you know very active on fruition productions we are going to be dropping um, several things okay. not just the locations of the premieres and such right. uh we have several chris has several things to drop um on fruition that he has in mind right. uh, before the right. premieres so um but we will definitely be reminding the community hey come get your you know your tickets right, 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 we'll also right. we'll also you know not only tell you who's going to be there that will right. be in the film but we'll also um tell you just you know this theater has only so many seats so mm -hmm. come get your tickets now and yeah don't wait on it back. guys because yeah, yeah. I, I foresee these things just selling out i mean in in the one you're going to do in houston i mean i know in texas there's more if there's 120 seats there's probably about something like you know ten thousand yeah. xrp holders that would be wanting to you know and, and of course a lot have available online but i mean to me i i think they're all going to sell out it would be surprising if they don't especially considering what you just mentioned that there'll be people there to answer questions that were actually there in the film. Now, would exactly. you guys be at each one of the premieres as they happen, you or Chris? Yes, we will. We are both coming to every each and every single premiere. You yeah. know, we're we're planning on uh, hopping around from city to city within eight days. You know, going yeah, that's going to be pretty cities. tiring. <laughs> so, but, yeah. but we will be there at every premiere, and oh, you know, we'll. Fantastic. The at the premiere, we'll have everything yeah. set up, not just the QA, but we're gonna have our merch store. Um, you know, both oh, that's online. Something I was gonna ask, yeah. Cause you know, um, yeah. a lot of folks, you know, like one of the things I saw the poster and wow, do uh -huh. I ever love that? I was thinking, I want to get one of those, frame that. So where can people go to, you know, purchase some of this merchandise, like you know, like the posters and what merchandise is available if they wanted to support you that way? Yeah. Um, so when we drop the, you know, the dates and times for the premiere next week, we will also have available the merch on our Fruition Productions website. Everything yeah. is going to go through the website and we'll direct you guys there. But we will have, you know, merch, um, you know, T-shirts, uh, hats, uh, backpacks, you know, uh, sweatshirts. Even wow, John D and Knuckles. Uh, oh we'll no, have... kidding! <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll I've have seen the him wear. I've seen him wear that uh, necklace where he has some brass yeah. knuckles on a necklace. I love that. And by the way, yeah. I mean that. You know, when you consider. Um, I always, you know, I've always supported John Deaton, but this we've only got mm -hmm. a few weeks here to kind of get yeah. behind. If you're out there in Massachusetts to kind of get behind somebody that really got behind us as a community. I mean, this exactly. guy, when he became amicus curie and the flack that he took, it was truly wild, but he was, he represented over 75,000 XRP holders worldwide. And yeah. at the time, one of the things that amazes me the most is that the SEC had come out and said a petition to court to not allow him to take that right. role, saying that, right. oh, they got Ripple to be their defense. Well, I'm thinking, well, wait a second here. <laughs> Isn't the SEC there to protect us as retail investors? And that's why they're suing Ripple in the first place. Why would Ripple be our defense? Exactly. That was the kind of craziness about what was going on. And uh, that John Deaton came up and stood up for us like that. And this is why when you, and also, I mean, we've watched his uh, opponent, Elizabeth Warren, <laughs> 
and not to make this political, but that whole situation <laughs> where Gary Gensler and her, you know, had traded the questions and answers so that oh, when yes. he came before the House Financial Services Committee and yep. basically it was a dog and pony show, kind of shows you what this, you know, what some of these you know, individuals really think of this space, you know, we're all tax cheaters, it's not. I think that right, this documentary right. is going to show that, no, this is not about, you know, uh, people just going out there, you know, to, you know, it, it's showing that, hey, we are in a technological revolution that most right, people right. have never lived through before. Sure, we've lived through the internet and, of course, the computer, you know, the home computer and all that kind of stuff. But right. we've never been at a at a global transition where monetary instruments in and of themselves are evolving into something else. I mean, the last time we saw that is like when coin and paper money came into existence. We're talking almost thousands of years, you know? So right, right. I think that this, this is a very, and the fact that you're able to tell this story as more or less it's happening. So this isn't just something done, you know, about, oh, well, here's a documentary of JFK 30 years after right. it took, took place. It's happening now. We it's are telling the story now. in it. And yeah. you're telling the story right now as it happens. And that's probably the right. best way to ever really report a story. You're as close to the truth as you're ever going to get. And right. this is right. an unbiased point of view, which I really appreciate. Maya, I think uh, this is just an, a, just an awesome gift that you guys have really a labor of love that you've put in for the community. And Judy and I certainly have supported it and we just love you guys. We really, really appreciate Chris and you and all the effort you put in. Cannot wait to see this thing get released. And uh, I, and I really value the fact that you've been able to come on and talk to about it. Any final comments that you really want to get out there and make and, and let this yeah. community know? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said, uh, you know, really we are telling the story, you know, of Ripple and the SEC and right this yeah. technology, but more so than that, you know, what well, we can, I mean, I just saw the latest updated cut of the story and the film and, you know, it's about the community. It's about the heart mm -hmm. of the community. Um, you know, what everyone has gone through. I know that this is a big deal for the community because it is giving a voice to to the community um and we want to honor that we want to make sure that we don't you know that the yeah. community doesn't get put in the background um uh so yeah. uh yeah, these are average rank and file folks right yeah. <laughs> you know i always exactly it this way we we create content but you know it's the folks out there that are make that are creating the community and exactly. uh, and so I, I I I resonate with that too. I value that. Well, Maya, thank yeah, you so much, you. and and I really hope you you know pass our congratulations on to Chris too. You guys have done a fabulous I will. job. He's and hard uh, at work. <laughs> yeah, he I I heard that he's really just yeah I, amazing the amount of energy you guys have to do this. When I was there at XRP Vegas, and uh, you know you can almost see oh my gosh the you know under the lights under this under that all the people and everything you guys are just amazing to be able to do that because most of us were kicking back and it was our party time <laughs> that you guys were working like you know you're as busy as bees so really really value that. Well, I'll tell you what, well, cannot thank you wait for having me, David. You're Appreciate most it. welcome and. Uh, Guys, I'll tell you what, we're going to keep all, put all the links for everything that we just shared is going to be down in the description of this video. Let's really get behind this is going to be an amazing production for this community. If there ever was one guys, even bring your skeptics, bring your skeptics, let them see I agree. It, you know, yep. and, and, and see, you know, the evidence right before them. They, I mean, that's the whole thing. We're not out there, you know, trying to indoctrinate all kinds of people into XRP. No, it's about telling the story as the story has happened unfiltered and unbiased and what an opportunity for us as a community to get behind it and support it hundred percent. So guys, that's my encouragement. Maya, thank you so much. Thank you, David.